When did it all go wrong? Why did Arabs and Jews start hating each other? Is it because of Judaism? Is it because of Islam? Is it about oil? Money? Unlikely, as for over 1,300 years, since the very beginning of Islam, Jews and Muslims lived together in an unprecedented religious and cultural harmony in Palestine, North Africa, and Spain. It all seemed to be going just fine till the 20th century. But then something happened. And ever since, Jews and Arabs had been at each other's throats. in Switzerland have possibly something to do with how it all went wrong. Basel was the setting for the first Zionist convention in 1897. Zionism was a national Jewish revival movement that sought to unite all Jews in a national homeland. They just weren't sure where that homeland was. Up until 1897, there were all kinds of crazy ideas thrown into the air, like Uganda, Alaska, Madagascar, and other less exotic destinations. In Basel, however, the Zionist movement decided on an ideal and historically relevant location, Palestine. But what if the people who were already living in Palestine didn't want to have a national Jewish home set up in their country? The Zionists had some clear ideas about that problem from the very beginning. Theodor Herzl, considered to be the founder of Zionism, wrote in 1895, we shall try to spirit away the penniless population across the border. Leo Motzkin, one of Zionism's most liberal thinkers, wrote, The colonization of Palestine has to go in two directions. Jewish settlements in Eretz Israel and the resettlement of Arabs in areas outside the country. Chaim Weizmann, the head of the World Zionist Congress and future president of Israel, proclaimed the Palestinians to be the rocks of Judea, obstacles that need to be cleared on a difficult path. Amazing how little have changed in Judea since then. The, the, the Jewish people came into this country said this is our country and they didn't say it's our country but we recognize that there's another people living here let's 
see what we can work out. No, the whole idea of Israel until today is this is our country from the Mediterranean to the Jordan River, and it's only our country. It's exclusively our country. There is no other people. There's a bunch of Arabs living here, that we know. But there's no people, there's no other people with a claim to the country, with a legitimate right to the country. This is our country exclusively, and therefore, either you shut up, if you're a Palestinian, and you live in one of the little islands we'll give you, by sufferance, not by right, or get out. But back to the story. At the end of the 19th century, there were hardly any Jews living in Palestine. So the Zionists started campaigning all over the world for Jews to immigrate to Palestine. In Zionist vocabulary, this is called Aliyah, which means to ascend to a higher place. I'm not kidding. Most Jews thought the idea sounded like a pitch for a horror movie and decided to immigrate to the U.S. instead. But some Jews bought the whole ascending thing and actually came to Palestine. The Zionists also launched Operation Buy a State. They went and bought all the land they could from Palestinian absentee landlords. Once the land was theirs, they threw out all the Palestinians that were living on it. The Zionists called this process Judifying the Land and Land Redemption. Terms that, surprise, surprise, are still being used in current Israel regarding government policies. Then, in 1917, things changed. The British conquered Palestine from the Turks. They legalized the Jewish national home idea with the Balfour Declaration in the same year. Palestine became a special case because the British violated the provisions of the Mandate for Palestine because they put the Balfour Declaration into the Palestine Mandate, you see. What did this mean? It meant that for Palestine, the wishes of the inhabitants, 90% Arab, would not be listened to, and they would not be developed for independence. It would be Jews, once they came in through immigration, you see, they would be allowed to develop. And so it's really with the Palestinian Mandate and the violation of the mandatory provisions to give the Zionists the right to create a majority of Jews to create a Palestinian state, that the the real Palestinian Zionist conflict begins. With very few illusions on both sides. The Palestinians launched two popular uprisings against the Jews and the British blatant pro-Zionist policies. The first took place in 1929 and claimed hundreds of Palestinians and Jewish lives. The second, in 1936, was practically a small-scale war between the Palestinians and the British, who were also aided by the Zionists. It lasted for three years, and in the end, approximately 5,000 Palestinians died. The British also exiled the Palestinians' leadership and dismantled all Palestinians' paramilitary units. The Palestinians were left defenseless and leaderless. Uh, Most of the Israeli commanders had studied the British reaction to the Palestinian revolt in 1936 and 1939, which became the manual 